Hi, I would like to uh, thank first of all Soumya for giving me an opportunity to speak today. Uh, the topic that I have been given is penetrating keratoplasty. Of late, uh, penetrating keratoplasty has taken a back seat because of all the latest innovative eyes uh, uh, on your transplant surgeries that have come. But still, penetrating keratoplasty has a, a certain uh, role in selected indications. In short, penetrating keratoplasty is nothing but removal of the diseased uh, cornea and replaced by a full thickness host uh, tissue. The next eight minutes, I will try to explain the different instruments that are commonly used in penetrating keratoplasty. And also, uh, we shall talk a little bit about the surgical procedure. Now, coming to the instruments, the first instrument is the speculum. For, for penetrating keratoplasty, any speculum can be used. But what is important to remember is it has to be, uh, it has to give good exposure, it has to give least pressure on the globe, and it has to be self retained Coming to the uh, flaringa ring, uh, as the name suggests, it is a circular shape and it is mainly uh, made of stainless steel. It, it uh, maintains the sterile rigidity and prevents the collapse of uh, during the trephination process. It is available in sizes from 12 millimeter to 22 millimeters and mainly used in PKs and aphakic eyes, PK with pseudophakic eyes and pediatric eyes. The calipers are, are the measuring uh, instruments that are used during the keratoplasty. It is mainly used to measure the geometric center just before the termination process and also to, uh, to, to measure the donor size. The corneal marking instrument is also the RK marker where you can have eight, eight spokes or 12 spokes. Basically, it can be, uh, the impression can be put on the cornea and helps us in placing the radial, radial sutures. Refines are by far the more common instruments that are used during the penetrating keratoplasty. The one that is, uh, uh, the one that is shown here is the handheld disposable refine, which is available in various sizes from three millimeters up to 17 millimeters. This is mainly used during the donor as well as the recipient preparation. Of late, the vacuum trifines are generally preferred. Uh, the one that is kept here is the Hesburgh Barrett trifine. It is mainly preferred because it gives a sharper cut, the, the depth is more controlled, and it gives a vertical cut, thereby reducing the astigmatism. It is available in diameters from six millimeter to nine millimeters in 0.5 increments and each 90 degree rotation cuts the tissue by around 60 microns. This is the uh, Teflon block that is uh, shown here. It is mainly used uh, for the donor preparation where the, uh, the donor is placed on the Teflon block with the, uh, the endothelial side facing up. This is the Iowa PK uh, corneal punch that is used again for the donor preparation. It has an expandable edge and uh, uh, from 6 to 9 millimeter trifine can be kept on this, beyond which it is difficult uh, the that can slip off. It also has a central hollow which houses the Teflon block. The grasping forceps, uh, the ones that are shown here are the Polacks, the 0.13 and the Pierce Hoskins forceps. This is mainly used during the uh, recipient uh, bed preparation as also during the suturing process. This is the patent spatula or the graft holder basically which helps in uh, transferring the, the donor tissue from the Teflon block to the recipient bed. These are the cutting instruments, the Trotman right and left scissors and the corneal curve scissors. Please note that the scissors here that are used are curved to facilitate the cutting of the tissue in a circular fashion. This is the suturing instrument that is a needle holding forceps, the straight and the tying forceps that are used for the suturing process. The most commonly used sutures during the penetrating keratoplasty is the tenzino monofilament nylon sutures. They are preferred because of the ease of placement of the sutures and it maintains a tensile strength for a long period of time. The 80 bicycle sutures are mainly used to, uh, the, to anchor the uh, filinga ring on the epistera. So this is just a picture showing all the various instruments that are used in penetrating keratoplasty. Coming to the procedure, it is very important before we uh, start the procedure to monitor the IOP and to control the IOP. It's also important to measure the, to, to control the inflammation. And also, it is, just before starting this uh, surgery, it is also important to mark the geometric center 
uh, of the eye so that the graph size can be centered around it. In this particular uh, case, we are using a seven, uh, seven millimeter refine. We are using the handheld refine. It is very important to note that it is, uh, it is refined in a very controlled fashion and not a full thickness because it might injure the underlying iris and the anterior lens capsule. So once we do a partial refination, we do a, a guarded entry and then the, the, the button is cut in a circular fashion. Again, making sure that the intraocular structures are not damaged. And uh, once it is uh, cut, uh, in this particular case, there is a coexisting cataract. So the, the cataract surgery has to be done in a routine fashion. Many a times biometry can be an issue in these kind of situations. So the ideal way of doing it is to use the axial length of the involved eye and the keratometry of the other eye in, uh, in, the, in uh, calculating the IO power calculation. It is important to note that this is an intra extraocular procedure. Uh, so there can be chances of in severe uh, vitreous of trust. So it is very important to be very gentle when we do the surgery, especially during this step of cortical wash. It has to be done very gently because there can be frequent vitreous up thrust. Care is taken to remove all the cortex from the eye making sure that there is no cortex because that can lead to further inflammation. Now once all the cortex is removed, then the intraocular lens is placed. In this particular uh, case, we are used a single piece uh, lens. Many a times if the capsular support is uh, weak or absent, we can use a retro uh, fixated iris claw lens or an SFIO. Many people uh, put the lens at this stage or they can also put the uh, lens after four sutures are, uh, uh, after the donor button is placed and after four sutures are placed. Once this is done, the donor tissue of the, of the required size is placed on the recipient bed and the sutures are placed. The first four sutures are known as the cardinal sutures are by far the more important sutures. Always first the 12 o'clock suture is placed followed by the six o'clock uh, suture. Now among all the sutures, again 6 o'clock uh, suture is the most important because that will determine how your astigmatism is going to be. So once the sutures are placed, mainly the sutures are placed at 90% depth, 1 millimeter on either side and uh, this is uh, cut in a linear fashion. And once the sutures are placed, it is very important to cut the suture bits closer to the knot. So like in this particular uh, step, the six o'clock is being placed, then the three o'clock and the nine o'clock suture. Now once the four sutures are placed, then uh, we have to look for the, uh, the diamond shaped configuration and uh, following which the uh, other sutures are placed in a radial fashion, totally 16 in number. Now once this is uh, done, then the sutures are uh, buried either on the donor side or the recipient side. Most of the surgeons prefer uh, burying it on the donor side to prevent any bastardization and thereby reducing the chances of graft rejection. Now once all the sutures are placed, the, uh, we have to look for a wound leak, which is a very important step prior to closing the surgery. And after doing this, it is always uh, better to uh, give a subconjunctival uh, injection of antibiotic steroid combination. Now the various suture, suturing uh, patterns that are followed are the interrupted sutures, the continuous sutures and the combined sutures. Among them, the interrupted sutures are the most preferred because especially in pediatric eyes and in vascularized or inflamed eyes. Thank you for your patient hearing.